Hi and welcome back. Arteza drawing pad. And it's time to review it. I want to talk a little bit about the difference between sketch paper and drawing paper. And the difference might be subtle. And some companies sell their sketching paper as drawing paper and vice versa. They, they don't uh, make two kinds. They make one kind for both. In general, sketch paper is quite thin and uh, of a lower quality of um, fibers. Sometimes it contains lignin. It is not very common anymore to find paper that contains lignin, which is also known as acid, that causes it to yellow. But, um, but in general, sketch paper is usually thinner and as I said, made from a lower quality uh, fibers or lower quality glue. So uh, the, the point of it being sketches is kind of preliminary work where you're just trying things out and, and stuff. And it's usually done with graphite. So it doesn't need to withstand as much abuse as art paper does. So drawing paper is usually a bit thicker or heavier and uh, it can be um, have more or less texture to it uh, depending on uh, brand and make. But a rough drawing paper is usually less rough than a rough uh, watercolor paper. So if you used to watercolor paper and you see the the name rough uh, or coarse on, on watercolor paper and you see the same on drawing paper or sketch paper. Uh, don't go don't get too alarmed because it the coarse most coarse uh, drawing paper I have ever seen was pretty much like a knot paper or a cold press fine grain uh, watercolor paper. It it usually doesn't get more texture than that. Not unless we're talking about pastel papers. Um, this is drawing paper. It's a drawing pad. Uh, Arteza has sketch paper as well. And I don't know what the big difference is between one and the other. I needed drawing paper because I wanted something to use for colored pencils and stuff like that. So this is what I bought. This is 130 GSM and which is a, a good paper weight for drawing paper. With watercolor I want it to be 300 GSM because I add water to it and if it's thinner or lighter than 300 GSM um, then um, then it buckles too much or warp or both when it gets wet. Since I usually don't use water or at least not as much water on my drawing paper 130 gsm if this is 80 pounds is, is just fine i don't want to get it under about 110 uh, gsm because then it gets so thin that if you're using colored pencils on it it uh, it might you might push the pencil through it when you try to burnish it uh, or or have to put it on some heavier layers also, if it's if it gets down to around 100 or 90 grams per square meter, then then you also if if you're doing line work for your preliminary drawing, you ske you're sketching out what you're gonna draw. The chances is also that you leave a, a a harsh line in thin paper. It's much much more likely than in, on on a heavier paper. So that's why I picked a drawing paper. I got lots of stuff that I use for sketching. Quite frankly, I just grab uh, paper out of my printer for, for sketches. If I uh, just need something to doodle on or, or try something out, uh, and it works fine. So, yes, Ateza, when you buy paper from Ateza, you often get two or three or more pads or sketchbooks and stuff. They, they usually pack it in in bundles 
so this this came with two pots in it um there are some of their more expensive watercolor paper where you can buy them one pad at a time but most of it is is two or more pads so what else is there to see here they claim it is as a tree heavyweight that's true enough spiral bound ideal for a variety of dry media so that's that seems like a fair statement um, they haven't I think uh, one thing I like about Ateza is they don't really promise you more than usually their products can hold up to the paper and I have already pulled out some paper here because I'm gonna do a drawing on some paper here it's fairly smooth it's not super textured, but it feels like it's textured enough for, for colored pencils to work on it. And um, I'm not sure how it will work with things like um, pastel pencils and stuff like that, because I don't think there's enough texture to it to, to really grab onto much of that. It'll probably be okay with charcoal. Um, I don't know if I... Yeah, we could try some wax crayons on there, but uh, not today. Today I'm going to do, um, I planned on, on a colored pencil drawing. So it was smoother than I expected it to be, but that is okay. It's not Bristol smooth. It's not slick like Bristol is. So I sketched out here a uh, copper tail. The original photo is from uh, Unsplash, and if you're looking for it, that bird is facing the other way on there, but it fit better on my paper like this, so I mirrored it. And I probably got all the wrong colors out for this because it is kind of pale, mostly pale yellow and stuff. But I can use some grays. I've got grays green, I don't need. I pulled pull out some colored pencil for another project. Uh, it was mostly greens, so I got pretty much all the greens out of the the box. This one, uh, this one we can use. There's an orange as well. But I seriously need to pick out some yellows. So. Um, let me pause the camera while I do that. So we are good to go. Pencils out and sharpened. So let's just get started. And uh, I think I'll just do this as a speed draw because I really can't draw and talk at the same time. So I hope you enjoy the music. <laughs>
so I I've done this now um, the contrast on the camera looks insane um, this red spot is not as in your face red in real life as it is on the camera I'm quite happy with the paper it really has been playing along very nicely um, I'm not gonna finish this as this is kind of a just a sketch to get my feel for the paper and it's the first time I have been drawing a what are these called cockatoo cockatoo um, so it was just feeling the the paper and the subject out a little bit and even though I've been working on this area of the beak a lot it still takes color so it's super good I've been using polychromos from Faber Castell by the way um, now so graphite pencils and polychromos colored pencils have been great on this um, and now I want to try a little bit of an abuse test. It is uh, one of these things I, I try so when I get new paper is how much, how far can I push things. Um, I use colored pencils on pastel paper and stuff like that. And I try wet media on, on this type of paper. So let me see. I got some watercolor pencils over here that I would like to try because I would like a little bit of a background here just so it's not floating in outer space by itself. I didn't pull out a green but I got a blue and I got a yellow so I'm gonna do some color mixing here. That's a little bit of a there's something on my desk underneath here, and I, when I look, I can't find it. So I wonder if it's little bumps in the paper. Now it's gone. It's probably dirt on my mat. I should clean my desk. So this is Karen Dash Mishima Corral. Oh, I don't want to bother with a background up behind those feathers there on the top. Um, they are very loosely drawn in. Let's do it like this. Oh, a magic circle. Uh, where's my yellow? So let's add some yellow to it so we get a greenish look here. This will either dull this down a little bit on the camera or make it pop even worse. Brush. Paper boggles a little bit, but that's to be expected when it's so light. It's not too bad, and it doesn't pill or and it doesn't disintegrate, so that's a good thing. So a little bit of watercolor is okay. I wouldn't attempt a full watercolor painting on this paper um, it would just boggle up too much and and that's okay it, I bought drawing paper I didn't buy watercolor paper but f for things like this a little bit of watercoloring uh, is, is okay 
Um, and I'm actually kind of liking how that little bird is coming along. It's not something I'm going to scan or nothing. This is really just a, a trial doodle. Uh, I might do a more serious drawing of, of this bird at some time. Um, I'm just kind of trying to feel things out. So, what else? We should probably... Hmm, let's try another Arteza product. I got all these gorgeous watercolor pencils. The real brush stuff. Like bucks, I got. And my phone rings. I'll be right back. Yeah. Um, yeah, now I'm covering things up. So I haven't used these very much since I got them. So let me try these. See if I can get them to stay somewhere on top of my water, so I might have to move them again. Just try and make a bit of a branch here. streaks a bit because the paper is absorbed and that is not unexpected. Drawing and sketch paper is often quite absorbent so it can be a little tricky to use water-based colors on, on it because uh, it will tend to streak even if it doesn't really streak too much on on other things. Just a second. So a bit streaky, but not unexpectedly much or impossible to work with. Sometimes easier to to do stuff if you know what you can expect from the beginning. with some water. That's too much. It leaves some marks but it lifts up quite nicely. So I you could use that to, to soften up some lines. That, that brush was way too wet for this. Um, I should probably have taken a water brush or something not quite so wet. So, this far I am quite pleased. Let me grab something else over here. I got this cute little set of drawers where I keep my charcoal sticks. Oh, come on, don't all get stuck in there. Come on, there. I need to fix that. They slid up on the ledge. The 
charcoal smudges a bit much on it. But that's again not not unexpected since the the paper is, is kind of smooth on its own. It doesn't have a lot of tooth. So it can't hold on to, to things all that well. I'll probably not do too much charcoal work on, on this paper. It needs a quite frankly the often works better with a pastel paper. Charcoal is okay, not fantastic, but can definitely do some charcoal work. Um, what else have I got in here? Needed to raise some more charcoal. Mm, so where, so where? Where you hide it? Better for still a monochrome set here. Uh, we got some hard pastels in here. These are drawing pastels. And they're meant for traditional sketches. And it comes in four colors. I took three, I guess. There's Sanguine, which is a like a dried blood red. And there's black. And there's usually a raw umberish kind of thing too. Um, And it's a bit the it is it works so it seems to work a little bit better than the than the charcoal is what I'm trying to say, but not a whole lot. It smudges too much. The lines disappear almost entirely when you follow them, so I have I pushed hard on that, and it's it, it's a <laughs> it's a tricky thing because you want it to smudge, but not too much, and you want enough line to stay back without it being too hard. So this far, color pencils and graphite has been what I like the best on here. So let's just try it on a branch because I need to practice my branches because birds that I draw a lot of often sit on branches so I need to get a feel for that. Graphite definitely is good on this paper. And this is a luminance, uh, a lumograph black from Stadler. This is a black, black graphite pencil with some, I believe there's some charcoal in here. Um, it's not a straight charcoal pencil, 
but it's uh, it's special in the way that it's a uh, it's, it's like a gra like using a graphite pencil, but it's black black and it's matte black. Uh, if you have very soft um, and very black graphite pencils, normally they're also super shiny, which can be a bit of a problem, especially if it's a graphite artist who wants to display their work and then when you put the, the gallery light on top it, it just flashes, you can flash out all the graphite so. I mostly do graphite as a sketching tool and a learning tool I'm not a graphite artist as such, but I sometimes enjoy doing a, a graphite art. So, I think my conclusion is that this is really quite good paper for the price. And it works best good with the medias I work the most with, like water, a bit of watercolor and some color pencils. That is great. It's good with graphite. It is okay with hard pastels and and charcoal, it was actually kind of okay with the, these uh, real brush markers from Arteza as well. I'll go back in and redo some definition and the details here with these. It doesn't really, it bubbles a little bit, but it dries fairly flat again. So, it's one of those papers that surprise in a, in a good way. I won't call it a mixed media paper because it doesn't, it, it does react to water. But for, for this kind of light work, it is just fine. So, thank you for watching. Um, please like, subscribe and all that. And I'll be back. And next up is Arteza Wash. Bye.